against this South Carolina defense. Gets up and in for South Carolina. Bree Hall, pretty taking over the baseline. Semi-final in the SEC tournament. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck, and Brooke Weisbrod with you. Tennessee and South Carolina, these two teams met in the championship game last year. And Rakia Jackson definitely one to watch when Tennessee is on offense. She's projected as the number three pick in the WNBA draft. And she has an ability to manufacture points, a three-level score. And she, when she gets to going downhill, she is tough to stop. This will stay with Tennessee. There's point nine on the shot clock. And yeah, that's a shot clock violation. South Carolina is the number one team in the nation. Nobody has been able to beat them. They're 30 and 0, and you cannot miss Camilla Cardoso at 6-7 in the paint for the Gamecocks. I, again, I cannot say enough of how incredible it is. Don Staley has five star new starters this season. And they are undefeated. The different South Carolina this year is that they have efficient three-point scores. They're not afraid to take those long shots. Sarah Puckett trying to work around 6-7. Camilla Cardoso, and this is going to be the Gamecocks basketball. Well, the week started on Wednesday with all 14 SEC teams a shot at making it to Sunday. We are now down to just four. Yesterday, South Carolina made their debut in this tournament. They defeated Texas A&M 79-68, to but had a season-high 24 turnovers in that game. Well, a Joni Taylor coach Texas A&M team is always going to bring the defense. Cardoso. That's what 6-7 can do. Two times. That's a turnover. So Raven Johnson will set things up. Number 25 in white. South Carolina wearing their cocky uniforms. An ode to their mascot. My laser full Wiley is in the game. Number 12, it's at the bottom of your screen. Bree Hall, Tennessee did a nice job boxing out. Here's Rakia Jackson. Still no points for the Lady Vols. Up ahead to full Wiley. Are you talking about her, Pat? I had to let you know for while it was in the game. She has entered the chat. A highlight reel waiting to happen. Remember the SEC All Freshman team. When you're playing a team like South Carolina, I think if you wait until you're down 10, you may have waited a little too late. At the buzzer, Bree Hall, Breezy. South Carolina's already got the momentum swinging their way, and they have hung on to it. First points for the Lady Vols of the 250 mark from Rakia Jackson. They started 0 for 10. And Re Rakia Jackson's first bucket is a three-point make. It's her 18th three of the season. Woo, high up off the window for Full Wiley. That young freshman can just make it happen as soon as she comes in. There's Spear. They had to stick her hand in a bucket of ice after uh, that game. Uh-uh, they got her a heating pad. They <laughs> want her to stay hot. <laughs> so now Fagan back to Hall. I think the intensity has picked up for the Lady Vols. Stolen away from Hollingshed. And Watkins to the free throw line. Over the last five games, almost 38 points per game. Crazy. I don't even know if it's, how do you describe it? A turnaround? Sanaya Fagan, number 20 in white. She's helping off Sarah Puckett, or she was the last possession to see how much help is brought to Rakia Jackson. They're going to bring two every time she touches it. Now, Don Staley does not want Rakia Jackson going one on one with anybody. Shots off the mark from Kaya Wynn and last touch by Tennessee. We talked about the five starters for South Carolina. Well, when Don Staley decides to sub in, she doesn't lose anything. She can go 10 deep. They average 33.3 points from their reserves. That is second in the nation. 
Sanaya Fagan at the elbow. That's what I'm talking about, the development. Sanaya Fagan didn't get a lot of minutes last year either. And she has had to work her way. And now she has found her confidence on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Three seconds. This is a two from Rakia. South Carolina starts this game 13 and 0. They're now up 19 to 6. Meanwhile, seven Gamecocks scored in the first quarter. Everybody came for South Carolina ready to play. Kelly Harper said her team did not. And South Carolina's defense had a lot to do with that. Tennessee only shot 13% in that first quarter. That's going to be a foul on Tessa Johnson of South Carolina, her first. Puckett hesitated a bit. Well, with the way that South Carolina has been blocking shots, they've got three. That's fourth for the day. South Carolina, the top team in the nation in that category. Sanaya Fagan showing off her range. You done sailing shook her hand. Yeah. She was happy about that. Spear in trouble. Into the hands of South Carolina. Tessa Johnson, okay. What has been giving Tennessee such problems in this first half? It has been all South Carolina's defense. The communication that they have, the switching, the rotation, the help. You talked about South Carolina's turnovers. Yesterday against Texas A&M, they have yet to turn the ball over. Do you think that was discussed overnight? Tennessee just eight points. South Carolina has had eight different players score the basketball. And no points for Tennessee off that turnover. Raven. She wanted the point guard to be offensive minded. She really likes Raven Johnson's instincts and her decision. That's an offensive foul on Rakia Jackson. She was a member of the SEC all freshman team last year. Remember her first season with the program. She came as the in as the top point guard in the nation, but had a knee injury in November of her true freshman year that cost her that first season. Yeah, I was so excited to see her coming in. I know freshman year you would not stop talking about. I saw her play in high school. I mean, she is a spark plug, and then she had a great summer. She played on the FIBA America Cup team with Rikia Jackson and Jules Spear. Played against her best friend in Camila Cardoso. That's one of the differences they've talked about with Ashlyn Watkins, that communication piece. She's so confident in herself. She'll direct traffic and tell the other players what she's thinking. Jules Spear up in it. The transition from high school to college, a lot of times the young players won't talk because they're not sure what to say. Ashlyn Watkins knows what the verbiage should be now. Watkins flashing across the paint. She'll just take it and nail it. Now, Tennessee has Tamari Key back in the game. She gives them some size down low. Strickland was the one posting up to the free throw line. She goes. Strickland, Jackson, and Tamari Key in their last meeting got the South Carolina post players in some foul trouble. Starting at 7 Eastern, the four second round games will be Thursday quarterfinals on Friday. That's at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. And the Tennessee Vols are the favorites going into the SEC tournament. They actually got a win over South Carolina to secure that SEC regular season title. Dalton connects pretty good. So is my laser full Wiley. <laughs> and the little dance down the court. She is just fun to watch. Number 12 on defense right now. Well, Wiley picked her pocket. Back to back. The local kid out of Columbia. It's like a gift. It's like you have just received the treasure of all treasures because she is special. Nice option to Mari Key, and she lost her shoe. Her shoe is down at the other end. She's going to go ahead and play without it anyway. You've got to give the ball to Camilla Cardo. And she gave it up. She didn't realize it. Defense! 
Tamari Key still going up and down the court with one shoe. Fulwale's in the corner, bottom of your screen. Pow Pow misses. Caroline Stripling up and in. You may want to think about it. And finally, there is a whistle. And the shoe coming down the court for Tamari Key. Well, Tamari Key does not get distracted easily, as we can already see, losing the shoe. And what a fab fabulous story of resilience for Tamari Key. As we know, she's made her way through an incredible journey through blood clots. Back here playing today, that's her mom, Tammy Brown, here in the stands, who was also a collegiate athlete. She played volleyball at Coastal Carolina. What, what? And she always had a message <laughs> for her daughters, which was to stand tall. She said, hey, my mom actually wasn't tall, but I sure am. So I always taught my daughters to stand tall and be the best at whatever you do. So while Tamari was sitting out, she was in charge of private free throws for Tennessee players each week. So that was her dedicated effort. And guess what? The free throw percentages, they went up. Wow, I love how she stayed engaged. But, yeah, can you imagine, I mean, figuring out eight games into the season last year, you have blood clots in your lungs, and you're not going to be able to play basketball. And for her to really stay committed and stay positive that she would be able to work her way back, to be on the floor, she had to get herself into game shape throughout this season. In a two-man game with Ricky and Tamari could be very beneficial for the Lady Vols. Jasmine Powell fought for the offensive board. Just three points for Rakia Jackson, who is projected to be a top three pick in the WNBA draft. South Carolina has shut her down for now. Mm. So Camilla Cardoso is going to have to take a seat. Two points, three rebounds. For most teams, you might think, oh, that's bad news. But Don Staley's got plenty to pull from. And they've had experience playing without Camilla. She has missed four games this year, two to play with her national team to try to qualify for the Olympics. And then they rested her for two games because there's a lot of travel involved. Your college debut in Paris, France against Notre Dame. And you bust that out. The confidence. Jewel Spear gives herself some room to hit the second three that she's hit. Sakima Walker. And that's tipped by Spear. There's a difference in watching it and preparing to go against it. And Tennessee wants to use all of this shot clock. Can Tennessee build some momentum here and get a bucket going into half? you got to get a touch for Rakia Jackson. There it is. Jackson just three points. And I think that goes to Don Staley saying she's going to be bringing two, seeing some extra bodies, so making her have to give the ball up. Both are good for Jasmine Powell. If there's anybody that can score with five seconds left on the clock, it is my laser full Wiley. She's practicing that countdown. Oh! Now the Lady Vols did grab some momentum. They ended the half on an 11 to 1 run. They were even with South Carolina in the second quarter after being held to a season low in any quarter of six points. Kelly Harper told Brooke Weisbro that they didn't really seem ready for the aggressive defense that South Carolina brought. They settled in in that second quarter. Now, can the Lady Balls turn it up as they start the second half? Chloe Kitts. Patience paying off. South Carolina played 10 players in the first half. Eight of them scored. 
now Bree Hall has the responsibility of checking Rakia Jackson. She only had three points in the first half. I'm sure that was an emphasis. Get Rakia the basketball. And I got to believe that Tennessee is going to try to put Camilla Cardoso in ball screen action. Make her have to come out and defend. And if she doesn't, be ready to shoot the ball. And Camilla has to be careful. She does have two fouls. And Tamari Key touched that one. That's got to be South Carolina basketball. The big question mark, will we see Angel Reese because she rolled her ankle yesterday? She's dressed. She's got the leg sleeve on. Angel Reese, the SEC player of the year, a national champion a year ago. Rakia Jackson for three. The face-up games. That's where Rakia Jackson can be more impactful going against the length of South Carolina. Tamari Key with a block on Camilla Cardoso. Jewel Spear weaving. Jewel Spear, three seasons at Wake Forest, was a two-time All-ACC selection before transferring to Tennessee. Tennessee's cut this to nine. They have trailed by as many as 23. Remember the first two meetings, very close between these two, and the second one, the most recent one, coming last Sunday. Raven Johnson in the corner. Just the second three of the day for South Carolina. They are second in the nation in three-point percentage. They're just letting Rakia Jackson cook, as you should. But again, face up away from the basket. Instead of her back to the basket, she has more options when she's got the ball out around the perimeter. Now, Rakia Jackson is over by us. Again, see if they put her in ball screen action with Camilla Cardoso. The other side to a waiting Puckett. First points for Sarah Puckett. It is a 23-7 run for Tennessee. Cardoso battling for position. Solid duck in by Camilla. Still a nice look for Jackson. Doesn't finish at the free throw line. Kits the other way. Got in the weight room stronger and brings that tenacity. And Joel Spear is foul. It's Joel Spear at the free throw line for Tennessee. Guys, you mentioned Rakia Jackson and her mom, Karen. I love the post that she put out yesterday, 8.45 in the morning. She said, you have to trust your star player. That's it. That's all. Message sent. Cardoso trying on key. She'll kick out to Hall. Stays with South Carolina. She will revert to catching it and dribbling it. That was a problem for her when South Carolina played against Tennessee earlier, or played against LSU earlier this season. Very frustrating first half. She's patient there. Got the foul. Second on Tamari Keith. But what I want to see Camilla Cardoso do is get down in a stance so that she can catch a leading pass, especially when teams defend her one-on-one, -on -one, so she can just catch it, turn, and go score it. Camilla Cardoso, originally from Brazil, moved here at the age of 15. 
Jocelyn Watkins. Wow. Snuck in there to get that offensive board off the free throw. Watkins now with six points. South Carolina 16 second chance points. That's over their season average. They average 15. Joel Spear, offensive board, puts up the shot. Sarah Pocket, a second offensive rebound for Tennessee in this possession. Tamari Key misses the first. But her physicality, her presence, her size down low has been important. The Tennessee's had to adjust. They were down right from the start of this game down 13 to nothing started 0 for 10 from the field and tamari key's conditioning has been big and having her be able to stay on the floor longer and now south carolina with this lineup on ball screens from kia jackson they can just switch it so guards don't have to rely on the help of a camilla cardoso because fagan and watkins they can defend away from the basket Raven Johnson has Jackson. Spear over the top of Bree Hall. Looks like Tennessee switched up to a little bit of a zone with this lineup. The leading scorer and rebounder for Tennessee, Rakia Jackson. Tess Darby by herself, and that's the shot she loves. Tessa Johnson short on the layup. And Tess Darby fifth in Tennessee history and career three-pointers made. Just added to it. And she was 0 for 4 against Bama. Well, Wiley with the steal with the bucket. Up to 11 for Malaysia for Wiley. The only game cock in double figures. And then they toss it inside to Rakia Jackson. With Spear and Darby on the floor at the same time, they can pull the defense away from the basket and allow Rakia Jackson to cook inside. Turn around from Fagan. Woo, let's go. That was sweet. Turnover. Fagan had a good look, but shorted it. Transition three for Rakia. Boom. 15 points for Rakia Jackson. This is what you want in the SEC semifinals. Both teams trying to make it to Sunday. Now Rakia Jackson does pick up her third foul. She takes a seat for Tennessee, and that changes things. I think only to rest her through the end of this quarter. I'm sure we'll see her back real early in the fourth. Six seconds. Kitts caught in the double team. What? Chloe Kitts. Acrobatic shot. Just happened. For Wiley and Pocket. And have, even after a long pause, Malaysia Fulwiley ready to hit two free throws. And that's why 
Fuwali has such confidence to go out on the floor and do what she does. She's shooting 50% from the field. Meanwhile, Tennessee much improved in the second half. That first quarter was really the biggest problem for Tennessee. They think just preparing for the intensity, and they should have been familiar with it because they'd already played Tennessee two times in the regular season. Lady Vols started to settle in and coming out of the locker room at halftime. Now they're ready to compete. And Tennessee was held to a season low in any quarter of six points to start this game. So you heard Don Staley say, Malaysia Full Wiley, Tessa Johnson going to start this fourth quarter. Rakia Jackson playing with four fouls. You got to get her off. You can get her off the block. Let her face up. That's when she was getting things going. Just three fouls for Rakia. I'm sorry, three fouls. Fourth quarter. Yes. Dropping it in for Jasmine Powell from the elbow. And Tennessee's biggest focus has got to be putting back-to-back -to -back stops together. Spear tipped it, 15 seconds on the shot clock. Gets the pass to Tessa Johnson. And there's two stops in a row for Tennessee. To defend and then finish it with a rebound. Puckett's got three shots coming. Sarah Puckett just three points today. She was big in their second round game against border rival Kentucky. Had 22 points in that game. We go, six points. Buckle up. Closest it's been since it was six to nothing, South Carolina. They've led by as many as 23. Smooth from Cardoso. That's the early work I'm talking about. I wanted to see from the six, seven center for the Gamecocks. She has eight. 38 paint points for South Carolina, just 12 for Tennessee. There's two more. Tamari Key rolling to the basket. Jasmine Powell has been all over Tanita Pow Pow. Yeah, Pow Pow has not scored. Letting it fly! Here come the Lady Vols! Pow Pow looking for her first points! On the three, she shoots it better than anyone in the nation! See the double team on Rakia Jackson. Ten seconds. Spear. Fear the spear. Tennessee's picking on Camilla Cardoso in those ball screens. Four point game. Rakia on cleanup duty. Oh 
South Carolina only has five points here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, their offense, it's been a little chaotic. They just have not been as organized in their execution as Tennessee has been. That was blocked by Watkins. Stolen away by the Lady Balls. And that's the fourth foul on Ashlyn Watkins. South Carolina projected to be that top overall seed. No matter what happens today, Tennessee an eight seed in the NCAA tournament. They have trailed by 23, now just down two. And Tamari Key ties it. Brooke, what was Don Staley talking to her team about? She wants to see them spread the floor. She's coming up to the top of the key. Here's Raven Johnson spinning. This game is going to come down to, I believe, paint points and rebounding. Both are good for Raven Johnson. Winner to the championship tomorrow to face either Ole Miss or LSU. Pierce sees an opening. They're trying to get mismatches of the defense shifting so they drive. They know Cardoso is going to rotate over right there to the free throw line where we find Jewel Spear. We are all tied up. Let's go. Three minutes to go to decide who goes to our championship game. Nobody in the nation has been able to beat South Carolina. Can Tennessee do it? Tessa Johnson, what a pass to Cardoso. Number five in white, that freshman has been a major impact today, and she draws the assignment again to stay with Rakia Jackson. There's going to be a foul on the floor away from the ball. Johnson just picked up her third foul. Don Staley has talked about how she has been learning so quickly. It's clicking right now. She's just been solid for them, including on the defensive end. She's so smart. This, she understands angles. I like the conditioning that she's gotten in. She's increased her quickness throughout this season. Two key free throws for Jewel Spear. Back to a tie. Spear with 21 to lead Tennessee. Rebounding is going to be so key in deciding this game. Raven Johnson at the SEC logo. Got to play through Rikia Jackson. That's now 17 points in the second half for Rikia. Paint and rebounding. So almost threw it away. Six seconds here. Going to scramble for the ball on the floor. Back out to South Carolina. It went through the legs of Tessa Johnson, and that's over and back. Almost everybody on both teams was on the floor <laughs> fighting for that basketball. South Carolina is not. Tennessee still has two fouls to give. Rakia Jackson, she got herself some room. 
to Murray Key. Almost had it. It stays with Tennessee. That's good defense. They've got to get it in. It's steal. Tennessee needs to look for number two in orange, Rakia Jackson, at the top of your screen. Six seconds. Backdoor cut for Rakia. Shot clock did not reset. Second chance goes. Tennessee with its first lead. Jackson has scored the last four points to tie and take the lead for Tennessee. But here's South Carolina's chance down by two. Now, and Tennessee still has two fouls to give. They just don't need to foul South Carolina in the act. Watkins looking for help. No basket. Don Staley calls a timeout. That will be the final. Raven Johnson will inbound. Pow, pow. The kick out to Raven Johnson short. Tennessee can feel it. The foul was on Malaysia for Wiley. And Tennessee is in the bonus. They've had their chances two times before against South Carolina. Can they finish it off here? Gamecocks have no timeouts. Three point seven for Wiley. She's fouled by Spear, no shot. For a while he tried to get in the act of shooting, but that foul was on the floor. That was a smart play by Jewel Spear. So South Carolina will have to inbound again. They don't have a timeout. Dawn Staley is trying to quickly talk to her team with 1.1. And Tennessee still has one foul to give, but they don't need to foul. Cardoso for three, banks it in! A miracle for the Gamecocks! No bigger shot for Camilla Cardoso, her first three of the season! Wow. And devastation for Tennessee, who was so close to taking down the number one team.